What's up crypto junkies, crypto enthusiasts, it's your boy Jay and we're here with another video. I don't have video on because we just did ceremony at my house and the background is a mess. The office still isn't set up but baby we are getting close, okay? Today they're coming by to set up the internet so depending on when you're watching this video, hey, we might be up and rolling finally. I always forget that things run slower in Asia than in America. Like in America, like to move, it's like, oh, let's move. It takes a weekend, you know, and you're up and running. And oh, cool, I need some desks. We go down to the corner, get your desks. It doesn't necessarily work that, work like that in other countries. And it's the reminder is so constant with that, that um, I love it and I hate it at the same time, to be honest with you. Anyway, let's take a look at the market here overall, waiting for our ticker to come back around. Beautiful day. Bitcoin 9561, BTC dominance 37%, and overall the market cap is holding strong over 400 billion, my friends. 434, this, this reminds me of last year. This reminds me of when we almost touched a trillion dollars in the market, okay? Let's take a quick look at the top 50, see, see what that's looking like. Which these changes in the Crypto Junkies members area that you're seeing in front of you right now, version 1.3, I think they're very close to being rolled out. I didn't check if they actually were rolled out. I didn't get a confirmation from the team. But very soon, by the time you watch this video, you should see these. There's only two, three red in the top 50. That's a good sign. If you were following along yesterday, I got BNB tab open. I uh, did a nice little runner back here. I circled that this would be premature confirmation for entering on a Mad Hatter strategy. This is where I actually got in. I got in at, what, 1515010. Oh. I posted this too, and I got out at 15609, oh, which was like a nice healthy 4%. I pulled 25% profit when I saw this indecision happening in here. But as you can see, I actually, I would have done way better if I would have just held on there at a nice healthy 9%. So if you held in there and said, nah, I think BNB is going to run up parallel, more parallel to BTC, then uh, you got a nice healthy 9% profit. And it looks like we're resetting here a little bit. This is the 15 minute. So the five minute, we're probably down closer to the bottom Bollinger. The only reason why I did this is because I wanted to once again show just how easy the Bollinger strategy is I haven't traded really using indicators and outside of like moving around converting exchanging I haven't done in weeks it was cool to, to do it and also too we're gonna be running a boot camp on the Mad Hatter strategy if you're not familiar with the strategy or you just want to kind of have a hands-on help we're gonna be doing three or four live trading sessions it will be a paid thing yes that's how we kind of keep the lights on and how we keep developing this tool and resource, which right now is 100% free to all of our day one OG members that have been with us since the get go. If you want to get in on this after the fact, we will be charging for this, but not very much. Okay. So it'll be one of those no brainer decisions. Let's look at BTC. All right. I'm kind of talking a little too quick. Let me slow down. So I'm just, I'm excited if you can't tell. So BTC is doing very good right now. It looks like we got a reverse head and shoulders kind of happening here, even though I don't really like, I don't really look for those patterns and I don't really, um, I don't know. They're important and they, I think they're just confluence pieces. I don't like start my TA or, or research or any of that with like, oh yeah, it's a head and shoulders. Let's start with that. It's more like you just kind of notice it while you're doing all your other TA. And so what that means is a lot of people, myself included, are calling for an 11,000 which is where we at right in here 11160 you see I got a line this is a significant line it shouldn't be in black it should actually be pink because I haven't gone back and historically looked through that to make sure yeah I mean at, at first glance on the daily we got this candle here starting there, opening uh, we got a lot of wicks touching so testing as support testing as support we've got some wick action looking like it's happening through here chopping through some wick and some candle action we got it touching again in here so it has proved to be significant support and resistance, which that's why I highlight these lines. So I was right on that. We can change that back to black. In the meantime, what we're facing is we're facing some heavy resistance in this 9.5 zone, because as we can see what we're at right now, look at it just right here. Okay, acted as support, 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 support. We had resistance hitting, chopping through those wicks and touching on the tops of the candles there and we're right in that zone again now. All right, so we've got this bullish 11,000 zone call, and then uh, resistance, we've obviously got some massive resistance on the way up. So this is our 11,000 zone right here. We've got some resistance at 10 as well. Those are always gonna be significant points. It's like, 
basic support and resistance is almost every round number or around that. So like 9,000 to 9,100 support, 10,000 to 10,100 support, same thing at 11. So we can assume that at a basic level, those are going to be some milestone numbers to hit. If we can get to this 10,000 and stay above it, meaning closing for the day above 10,000, that obviously builds more of a case for a bullish scenario. If we fall back down and we close below, you know, X, Y, Z number, like this is the basics that most of your TA should be following is that what we do during the day and where we close at at the end of the day is very significant and weekly, monthly, then add on top of that significance, okay? That in comparison to a five minute chart is obviously way, way different. The more we can get higher and climb higher and stay up at that number and close above that number for the day, that builds a bullish case. Does that make sense? And if we pull back and we close at these, these pullback numbers, then that creates more of a bearish scenario. So even if you're not applying other patterns, indicators, et cetera, like that, that should be your basics. That should be what you're kind of looking for and tracking from a day-to-day -day basis. And what you'll start to see is it's telling you a story and it's giving you data points. And then when we start to add on basic things like oscillators on top of that and lagging indicators like MACD, we get what? We get confluence. All right, you get it. Twitter is uh, the main spot that I go for news and it's the main place that I go to see like what's happening right now and we're following 267 accounts. These are mostly other TA people. These are exchanges. These are coin, official coin accounts. These are big players. This is everything that I feel is important in crypto right now and I'm probably missing some in all honesty. But check this out. That's now all pulled in in the crypto news feed. Again, this is part of the big update that we've been working on for the last Last two weeks can we get a little Wi-Fi I'm literally tithering off my phone just so you guys know so that's probably why this is a little bit slow we've also integrated the crypto charts you'll get a full list of just what we've done with the updates but here's the Twitter feed now being integrated in look at how beautiful that is ah sexy and then we got all the new stuff so this is like this is the hub man if you want to know like what's happening at, on the brink the second something breaks it will be tweeted first and you should probably treat it like, oh, is this actually happening or is this speculation? Look into it really quick. And then within an hour, two hours, you can expect articles to hit. So I never go to article sites first because you'll always see news break first on Twitter. I'll just give you a quick look at this. Might as well, we're already here. Let me tease you a little bit. Crypto charts, they're pretty good size if you've got a bigger screen monitor and you can add unlimited charts. Will be your four standard charts so that you can just get this at a glimpse. Again, I'm on a notebook monitor or laptop, whatever you want to call it. But uh, if you got a fat curved 32 inch, ooh, looks good. And then you can just add more charts here. Pretty cool. And we got auto suggest. So this was a pain in the ass, believe it or not, to actually pull this in. They don't give you this very easily. So we had to work at getting that. Just know that it was not easy to provide such greatness, okay? So yeah, check this out. ETH, Lite, and BCH. Look at this run up Bitcoin Cash has had. Jesus, epic, epic little run up. I don't even know what that is. I don't wanna play around with that, okay? All right, so anyways, news always breaks on Twitter. The, the site aggregators will come up later, right? And post articles. So let's get into some topics and some news that I feel is really important, some things that I wanna highlight, all right? In case you missed it, US court rules that the money laundering related case from uh, Silver Miller is going to be public against Coinbase. So what had happened was essentially Cripsy, which I never got involved in this, this Paul Vernon uh, was allegedly found guilty of stealing his user's cryptocurrency and ran off with about a hundred million worth of crypto with today's valuation. And the exchange went bankrupt and he laundered that money back out through Coinbase, which talk about an idiot. Gosh, like out of all your options, you're gonna use Coinbase in it. He's obviously a U.S. resident, and that's why he did that, so he could move out massive amounts of money. Well, guess what? They're saying negligence on Coinbase's part, and they're seeking $8.2 in damages, which that is nothing in comparison to $100 million. Now, what I find very interesting and what I'm anxious to see is we've got this new precedence being set. Like, we're going after big amounts of money in these scam cases. How much of that actually gets back to the user? Because... Remember like uh, back in the day, you know, Bank of America got sued for its overdraft fees and its aggressive this and that, which equated to billions of dollars in profit. But what did we all get, the users and the account holders? We got like a check for like $100. 
And I'm sure people got more than that. It was weighed out based on maybe how much you lost or how many overdraft fees that whatever on your account. But I'm just saying in general, there's like a meme and we all know it to kind of be a joke like, okay, wow, so you won, but the users get like $5 back. I don't know. That might all change with crypto because there's bigger and bigger cases now that are being tried and people being convicted of. So overall, I think this is a good thing because between this case here and this case here, which is where a suspect was caught across international borders in this mining heist, he stole mining equipment. This is proving that you can't really get away with stealing money, being a fraud, being involved in scams, and run and hide and get away with it, at least for very long. A lot of the older scams like OneCoin, those people are now being rounded up. They're being caught all over the world and being tried and convicted in other countries, Italy, Poland, places in the EU. So for all of those, for those of you, rather that are sitting back on the whole BitConnect thing wondering if those people are going to be caught devour just give it time give it time those guys will be caught and i believe that even people that weren't necessarily running the the companies and the brands themselves but were flat out lying to people and scamming just to get more profit and more affiliate commissions fill in the blank glenn arcaro you know people like that which just shitty human being all the way around guys like that goes you better spend the money now glenn because you're going to be caught you're going to be arrested you're too stupid to not be okay you're not that smart there's people who are way smarter than you who are being caught and arrested in international lines and international waters so that to me i think is very exciting because there's like this still this thought that like oh we can get away with scamming you know tens and hundreds of millions of dollars and we'll just like flee the country and go to another spot that's quickly dissolving uh, and i like that okay some other big news one in five big financial institutions whatever you want to define that as are getting ready to trade crypto by october 2018 this is based on a rudders survey where over 70 percent said that they intended to start trading crypto in the next three to six months now i would do want to disclose that the survey didn't say what kind of firms we're talking about here but overall this is positive and this does affect the market this is a piece that will positively affect the market uh, quickly touching on some good pr stuff is cz and binance have partnered with crypto savannah to help transform uganda's economy with blockchain technology Here's a guy who, if you want a great example of somebody doing good in the crypto space, it's CZ. He's not out there talking about right? He's not out there trying to say Binance is the best exchange. We're better than Kraken. We're better than Bittrex. We're the best. We're the greatest. He's just out there acting, doing things. And through his actions, more and more people are falling in love with this guy. If we take that scenario of a guy who's just humble, who's just grinding his face off, providing a great service, and his business is Binance in exchange, look at that example. Pretty great, right? Come over here on the other side and look at the example of what the Bitcoin Cash team is doing, where 99% of their time is just spent saying, no, we're the real Bitcoin. Like, give me a break here. Just go out and build a great product that provides epic value for your users and it will speak for itself. The fact that you guys are out there running around spending all your time, you've bought the Bitcoin uh, Twitter handle so that you can further dilute people and manipulate people. Your site, bitcoin.com, calls Bitcoin Cash Bitcoin and BTC is called Bitcoin Core. You're confusing people. You're a f joke of an organization. What If you even wanna call yourself that. Like, get real here. Just go and build something epic and then everybody will just use it. If you are the cheapest, great. Just be the cheapest. You don't have to then go around and say, nah, this shit over here is garbage, man. We're the best, we're the cheapest. That will never win you a community. That will never win you respect. You're basically going out and demanding respect from the marketplace instead of just earning it through having a quality product that provides value. It always boils back down to that basic equation. And I hate to say it, but like outside of really ignorant, brand new, wet behind the ears people, nobody's falling for it, man. And you're just getting more and more mad. 
Like you go, I, I've watched, I've sat back and watched, your message gets more and more aggressive and then it hits its crescendo point and then either Craig or Roger will show up somewhere and freak out on everybody and just say fuck all of you because you're mad. You're mad because your marketing is not working and you suck. Just get better. You won't have to go through these cycles. But like the emotional cycles, everybody's watching. That's an embarrassing thing to consistently keep going through that. And I've seen it now two or three cycles just since I've been in crypto since 2017. All right, so you guys could learn something off of uh, what other people are doing in this space. And that's it, that's all I wanted to talk about. We've got some big, great things happening. Japan has finally formed a self-regulating body, which has essentially been built from the exchange community inside of that exchange community, the, the 18 or 20 top exchanges in Japan, they've created this and that's what we need. We need more great examples just going out and taking action. In America, we won't see this because we wait too long on our regulating bodies to just come and save us. And I don't like that. I don't like that about American culture. I don't like that about American people is that the SEC, the FCC, it's not their job to come save you. Even though that's like their mission statement, half the time they don't do it. They're investing their time, resources into things that, yeah, it's important, but it's not the root of the problem. Okay, you need to go and tackle the root of the problem. Even if the SEC and every other regulating body in America was on top of their game, there should still be a self-regulated body that is run by a lot of the top crypto exchanges and the top crypto business company corporations in that country. It's just good ethics, right? Like that's just a good idea. So I would love to see that even though I doubt it's gonna happen. Uh, I would also love to see now that we are seeing that Coinbase is starting to be drug into court for different issues, when are we gonna address the Bitcoin cash manipulation situation that happened last year? When are we gonna address insider trading between Coinbase and Bitcoin cash team? I'd love to see that. If we're just now seeing that they're getting taken to open court over this other Cripsy money laundering case, let's get a little insider trading uh, case open against them. Okay, I'd love to see that because that whole situation was a joke. All right, that's it. So if you haven't already subscribed and you like what we're doing here, it t just takes a second. Go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell notification, which guarantees you'll see more of our stuff. If you like the roosters in the background, go ahead and smash the like button and be on the lookout because we'll be shooting more content soon. As soon as I get into the new space and I'm settled, then you can expect a regular content schedule from us. Up until then, you just kind of see and appreciate these hit or miss sessions that you got with me. All right, my friends, see ya.